welcome to my channel. Today's video is yet another manga haul unboxing. We receive not one, not two, but seven packages from Right Stuff over the past month. I don't know why they split all of my orders into these separate packages when I think it's a little bit more cost efficient to kind of consolidate into like one or two big boxes, but it is what it is. In all seriousness though, this is actually the most anticipated manga haul unboxing I have ever done on my channel because I actually have volumes from orders that I have placed over three years ago. Like this has the oldest volumes I've ordered on Right Stuff Anime and it's finally arrived here at my house and I'm so excited to show you guys all the volumes that I got and we actually have completed maybe a few series as well which is such a fulfilling like collector's wish is to you know collect all the volumes of their favorite series so I am so stoked to share you guys everything that I got so without further ado let's get to the unboxing so I ended up opening all the seven different packages because I thought it would be easier to just show you guys each series one by one instead of each box one by one because a lot of the series that I ended up getting were just split among these seven different packages. So for ease of filming and just ease of watching this video, I thought it'd be a lot more efficient to just take everything out and consolidate each series into one section. So here's kind of an overview of all the series I'll be talking about for this first part, which are Shoujo Beat reprints. So this media at the end of last year started reprinting a lot of the out of stock volumes and series of their Shoujo Beat line. And specifically, as you can see here, we have quite a lot um, for the beginning of 2023 that I'm excited to share you guys all of the different series. I'm just so happy to make more progress in my Shoujo Beat collection and all of these other series. We have some completion as well as just a lot of major progress and I'm really excited to go through each of these different series. All right, so the first series we're going to talk about is Kimi Todoke From Me To You. I was so excited when I saw the shipping notification from Right Stuff that these remaining volumes was coming to my home because I believe with these five volumes here, I finally complete the Kimini Todoke series. So I'm so, so glad to have these volumes. And oh my god, here it is. So I'll just show you guys each volume one by one. But basically, Kimini Todoke follows a girl named Saoko who has an appearance that kind of scares her classmates away. They kind of associate her to this horror movie character. And there in her class is very popular guy, Kazahaya, who ends up kind of approaching Susako um, during the first day of school. And she kind of like really falls for him, thinks he's like this really great guy. And Kazahayo tries to bring, you know, Sawako into kind of his world as well. And I just love their relationship so, so much. I remember when I first got into the series through the anime adaption, and I just find the relationship very wholesome as well as I just enjoyed seeing the growth of these two individuals. Both of them have, you know, their own set of issues and flaws that they kind of overcome throughout the series. I really also enjoyed the friend group of this series as well. They're very strong side characters that kind of make this series so well-rounded. And that's why Kimi Todoke is one of my favorite shoujo series of all time. I always look forward to kind of rereading the story um, every few years or so and the art is just fantastic um but yeah i this series has a special place in my heart and i'm so so glad to have finally completed because with this i am definitely going to do a reread of the entire physical series i've read this only digitally so i'm excited to have these in my hand so yeah that is kimi ni Tadoke. And next, we have, of course, volume 12 of Nana. And with this volume, I have finally somewhat complete my Nana collection. If you guys don't know, Nana is a series that's been on hiatus for a really long time. Uh, I think over decades or so at this point. But essentially, the author, I believe, had a health um, issue and she took a break from Nana. I believe she's 
better now, but has not really continued the series ever since. And so the story is kind of at a good cliffhanger at this point. But yeah, I'm just so, so happy to have this volume. It's one of my favorite shoujos as well. Follows two women who share the same name, Nana. They meet on a train one day heading to the city and ends up in a situation where they actually have to share a house together as well. And these two women who do share the same name, home, and all that stuff do lead very different lives. They, you know, face different types of situations. And I just really love the growth and how they kind of, you know, console each other as well as kind of be there for each other as well. Yeah, I really love the series a lot. The art is immaculate. And of course, any shoujo fan who has read Nana really hopes that one day this series could get some sort of conclusion. But for now, um, it is what it is. We'll see. But I love the series a lot and I'm very glad to have this final volume. Moving on, the next volume we have is from... Yon of the Dawn, we have finally volume 7, and I think this cover is so beautiful. We have Yona and Jeha on the cover. Wow, so, so pretty. I'm so glad to have this in my hand. Here it is. Yona is a wonderful protagonist, probably one of my favorite shoujo female heroines of all time. And I just love how wonderful this series is. It's an epic fantasy adventure series that follows Yona and her quest to find the four dragons after she is betrayed by her childhood friend. But there's just so much going on in this series and I love reading people's analysis and the story. It's just so thorough and I cannot wait for the next volume um, to come out. I think they just released the English cover of 38 and I'm just so excited to continue on the series because it is one of my favorite series as well. Another adventure series that I am a big fan of is Snow White with the Red Hair. We have volume 5 which is a reprint as well as the newest release which is volume 23. Anyways, Snow White is another adventure series that follows a girl named Shuriki who has, as you can see, red hair. In her home country, the prince of her country wanted to get married to her because of her beautiful hair. She ends up cutting her hair and running away from her home country and actually befriends and meets a prince of a neighboring country, Zen, and his friends as well. So yeah, it just kind of follows Shiriki's adventure as she kind of goes around with Zen and his friends and also kind of growing a lot and seeing new things that are outside of her home. So it's a wonderful series. I am a big fan of Snow White the Red Hair. I always look forward to a new release um, whenever that comes and I'm so so happy to have these two volumes and that is Snow White with the Red Hair. Okay so the next part of this section is my vampire related shoujos and when you think of vampire shoujos you think of vampire night so yeah i got quite a lot of volumes for this particular haul for vampire nights we have i think seven volumes for this series which is crazy and i think this is actually not even all of the volumes i am missing i think there's a few more that i am still waiting on but you know progress is everything so we have four five seven nine ten and twelve which is very exciting um i actually got into Vampire Night um, from the anime adaption. I watched it, I think, over a decade ago when I was in middle school and was actually very fond of the series. The music is so good, as well as this story is very <laughs> convoluted with the romance and drama, but I really enjoyed the series, at least when I was in middle school. So I actually never had read the manga um, after watching the anime. I never got around to it. It was always on my to-read list, but I never had time or it just kind of like slipped through the back of my mind. Fortunately enough, for 2023, I've been working on reading a lot of my books on my collection. Um, if you guys don't know, I collect a lot of my series from watching anime or actually reading the manga online first, but... Um, a lot of the series that I do watch anime, I just kind of get kind of lazy. Like I collect it because I really enjoy the anime, but I never got around reading the manga. And so I decided in 2023 to read Vampire Night from start to finish. And let me tell you, I really enjoy the manga. I've seen a lot of mixed feelings about Vampire Night as a whole, and I'm not sure if that stems from the anime or not, but the manga itself really clears a lot of the 
kind of mystery and like character's motivation from the first part of the anime. So the anime only adapts about one half of the Vampire Night series and the second half kind of gives you some more context on uh, why the characters are the way they is, background history, and kind of the outcome of everything that has happened um, during the first half of the story. And so after reading the whole entire Vampire Night series, I was just so enthralled that I ended up reading the spin-off series Vampire Night Memories, which is the sequel. And so I won't talk more about it, but I just really enjoyed the series. So I am definitely going to be collecting Vampire Night Memories whenever Right Stuff does another shoujo beat sale. But yes, I actually really like Vampire Night. So essentially the series follows a girl named Yuki Cross and she is the guardian of her um, of this academy called Cross Academy. Um, her adoptive father is the headmaster of the school and as a guardian she basically kind of balance and protects the day class and the night class so the day class is attended by humans and the night class is attended by of course vampires and so yuki and her friend zero are the guardians and she also has this pass with another vampire that attends the night class kaname as well and you can kind of see their relationship with each other as well as all of the dividing interests from all the other characters so yeah i'm so stoked to finally make some more progress on vampire night if you guys are wondering who my favorite character is it is zero i won't go into much details but he he's just amazing so that is everything about vampire night and on to the next series so as mentioned earlier, we're in our vampire shoujo phase of this haul. And so the final series that I am going to show you guys is Midnight Secretary. Look at these two. These two volumes here, one and three, actually does complete my Midnight Secretary collection. This is a quite a short series. I remember, I think it's like six or seven volumes long. So I don't really remember too much details on the story. But I remember this was like one of the earlier mature smutty reads i had read personally when i was growing up and so this was definitely like kind of a breakthrough in terms of like what content i read now but yeah midnight secretary if you can already tell from the name basically follows this female character she is a secretary who works at midnight because her boss is a vampire and so i won't show you guys the inside pages of the series because i don't know if there's any like explicit scenes but it's not wrapped in any way, but just to be sure. But I'm really excited to have this. I'll definitely do a reread of this now and get a refresher because it's been a while since I have read this series. Anyways, I'm so stoked to have these volumes. I love the color. So yeah, that is Midnight Secretary. And to wrap off the Shoujo Beat reprints, we have our final series, which is... Skip Beat! Oh my god, look at how many volumes we have. Same as Vampire Night, we have seven volumes here to make some more progress in my Skip Beat collection. We have 11, 13, 20, 22, 23, 24, and 34. So if you guys don't know, I am collecting the Skip Beat individual volumes compared to, I know Shoujo Beat has another version of Skip Beat, which is the Omnibus edition. I can't remember if it's a two-in-one or three-in-one, but a reason why I collected the single volumes is because I just love individual covers. I am always a big fan of collecting single volumes compared to Omnibus editions, unless the Omnibus edition has like color pages or something like that, like something cool. But I'm always leaning towards getting single cover volumes so that is my choice and I'm kind of glad I made some more progress because I was a little worried that I was collecting Skip Beat a little too late for these single covers so I'll just show you guys each cover one by one these look so fantastic but basically if you guys don't know Skip Beat um, it follows a girl named Kyoko she's from the countryside and lives with her friend and her friend ends up wanting to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. So she follows her childhood friend because she has, you know, she wants to support him as well. She does really like him a lot. And so, yeah, she goes to the city to follow her childhood friend and ends up, you know, being his caretaker and supports him throughout, you know, his journey there. However, one day when she was, I think, delivering food or something like that, she ends up finding like hearing overhearing her friend who's basically using her and that he is like dating another girl on the side so she gets really upset and 
in a form of coping with the situation, she ends up swearing revenge on him and joining the entertainment industry herself to surpass her friend. And so with that being said, you get to go through Kyoko's journey, becoming an actress in the entertainment industry, her growth, and kind of her developing love for her like career as well. And on the way, she meets Ren, who is another top tier actor in the industry. He's actually like kind of put off with her in the beginning of the series, but has grown to like her um, throughout the series as well. They definitely have this slow burn relationship. I've been growing up reading Sippy for so long, and so I'm very happy to have some more volumes in my collection. And yeah, that is Skippy. I hope you guys enjoy this first portion of the Shoujo Beat um, reprints of all the series that I got. So yeah, with that being said, let's head on to the next section. Okay, so the next section of this particular haul are also reprints, but just outside of the Shoujo Beat line. These are just other reprints from like Viz and Yen Press. So I will just show you guys each series one by one. So the first series I have is two volumes of Teasing Master Tagaki-san. We have volume six and volume 10 over here. Wow, this cover for volume six is so pretty. Like the water scene is just so, so cool. Anyways, we follow basically two characters from middle school, Tagaki and Nishitaka. They do various um, bets with each other every chapter and sees who wins and obviously from the title teasing master Tagaki-san. Tagaki has the upper advantage when it comes to these little bets and uh, games that they play but I just love their relationship so much. It is so wholesome, adorable, and hilarious. I actually watched the anime adaption for this series first and then ultimately collecting the uh, manga but i do hope that teasing master tagaki san does get a continued anime adaption because um recently the tagaki san movie came out um and it felt like the movie kind of wrapped things up but the manga is still ongoing so i do have some hopes that maybe we'll get a continuation of the anime series because i do really love the anime adaption of Takaki-san. It's just really cool and it is one of my favorite comedy series. So yeah, happy to have some more volumes to fill in my collection. All right, so the next series we have is volume eight of Laid Back Camp. Also, I just call the series Your Camp as well, whatever your preference is, but I absolutely love um, laid back camp your camp so so much it is a wonderful slice of life series about girls who love camping and i always find this series so so relaxing it gives me like a lot of motivation to actually start camping but i haven't done that yet um, i used to camp a little bit when i was younger um, with my relatives but as an adult now i have not really stepped outside in nature <laughs> for long periods of time so um hopefully uh, i do have some plans maybe this year or maybe next year to start camping a lot more frequently but yeah i just love the series so much i'm so excited for season three that's coming out this year it's going to be a blast and the girls are just so cute i just love this is like a wonderful series to just chill, relax, and watch at the same time. So yeah, that is Laid Back Camp. And the final reprinted series I am very excited to share with you guys is one I've been waiting for an extremely long time. So long that it is my longest right stuff outstanding order as well because I had placed this order in early 2023 and three years later I have finally got the missing volumes I needed to somewhat complete this collection and it is Gintama. We have the four remaining volumes that I'm missing for this series and yeah so if you guys don't know Viz Media only has physically printed Gintama in English up to volume 23 and had discontinued the series due to low sales and so we didn't get the rest of the volumes, which goes up to volume 74 or 75, I think, for Gintama. And so that's literally only less than one third of the series being physically translated, which is very sad. But nonetheless, I was very hopeful in at least collecting whatever volumes I could get on my hands. So now I finally complete the series. I have all 23 volumes, which is 
exciting. So yeah, I'm going to show you guys each series one by one, but I truly love Gintama so, so much. It is one of my favorite shonen series of all time. It has, you know, a great cast of characters that you can really, you know, connect to or just, you know, really appreciate. I don't think there's any characters that I don't like in this series. And I mean, that speaks a lot too, because there's a lot of characters in a Gintama. But basically, this series follows kind of like um, alternate universe of Edo and follows a man named Gintoki. He's a former or he's a samurai. And so basically, he sets up this kind of shop or business called the Yozora, and they basically do odd jobs. And he has help from two other characters, um, which is Simpachi, who is this human, he is a big otaku, and Kagura, who is actually an alien uh, under the species of Yato. So I love the main trio, they are fantastic. I love the story when there's a really good trio, and all three of them are just very strong characters that I am a big fan of following their development and progress throughout um, the series, as well as their relationship with each other, because it is just so, so well written. Love the series so so much. It has a very special place in my heart and I don't talk about the series all too much um, on my channel because I don't really collect any more Gintama merch. I used to when I was younger um, when the series was still ongoing because now both the anime and the manga completed I think around 2020 and the anime the final movie came out I think in 2021 but I remember watching the final movie of Gintama in 2021 and when it finally came to the US I like bought the tickets and everything and when I got there I remember being one of like two other girls in the theater and that was kind of like the emptiest anime movie turnout I have ever watched actually funny enough too I have a cosplay of Elizabeth I've never worn it publicly before, but my cousin did buy for me for fun, and so I do wear it sometimes, but <laughs> I was actually going to wear it for the movie screening of the final movie, but I was like, this is kind of awkward, so I'm probably not going to wear it. But anyways, I do have it. That's kind of a funny note. But anyways, so, so happy to have the series. Um, yeah. Anyways, that is my little spiel on Gintama, and on to the next section. Okay, so quick intermission. I actually got a special package from none other than Yen Press. Um, they reached out to me and kindly sent me a few of their new releases for December and January, and I'm so excited to share you guys all of the books that I got. So yeah, here's an overview of them, and I'm going to talk about each series one by one. I actually opened the package a while back so I can read them and tell you guys a few of my thoughts. So yeah, let's get started. So first we have is Oshinoko. This is probably one of the most anticipated new releases that I uh, have been waiting for since I heard the announcement. Actually, my friend and I attended Anime Expo last summer, which they actually announced Oshinoko, which was so cool. Um, and so uh, six months later, I think, um, we finally have the physical copy in my hand. I actually started Oshinoko when it came out as well during the pandemic and it really just kept me so occupied i was looking forward to reading every chapter and yeah it just has a very special place in my heart but basically this series follows goro he works at an OBGYN and basically he ends up finding out that his favorite idol ai hishono is pregnant with twins um from there on Honestly, cannot tell you any more than that because this series goes into a wild turn and so so many crazy things happen that it's definitely uh, you're in for a wild ride um, once you start the series. So I'm so excited to have this series physically. It's written by popular mangaka Aka Akasaka from Kaguya-sama Love is War and Mengo Yokoyari who is the mangaka of Scum's Wish. So the art is fantastic. The story is just very wildly unpredictable. And if you guys aren't convinced yet, the series is also getting a anime adaption coming out in April. Um, the first episode is going to be a 90 minute time slot, which is pretty insane for an anime adaption. It's basically the length of almost like three episodes, I believe at that point. So 
um, they're going all out for Oshinoko and yeah it is so so cool and I'm very excited to see this in anime adaption as well. So that is Oshinoko volume 1. Next we have is another um, series. It is Honey Lemon Soda Volume 1. So, so pretty. Um, this is a Shoto series I was also anticipating um, because they also announced this during the Anime Expo Yen Press panel, which I was very stoked about. But this one's actually kind of, I would say, a classic shoujo feel. Follows a girl named Yuka, and she definitely has a very tough um, school past in middle school. Essentially, she was bullied for being this really quiet girl um, that doesn't really talk a lot and just kind of a target basically from her classmates. And she ends up going to this high school because she meets this guy. Um, his name is Kai and he basically has this lemon soda hair, hence the title, and he somehow inspires her to like you know, step up for herself and do what she actually wanted, which is attending the school. Um, and so, yeah, they get into a very interesting relationship dynamic. And um, I remember reading this a long, long time ago. I actually have not read this in a while, but nonetheless, art is very pretty. And I think um, it's a nice, simple read with, you know, some drama, romance issue here and there. So yeah, that is Honey Lemon Soda. And funny enough, I ended up actually pre-ordering these books separately um, as well. So during the haul, you'll see that I actually got my own copies that I pre-ordered for these two series. So now I have two, two copies of Ocean of Coat and Honey Lemon Soda. And the next three volumes um, are series I actually have never read before. So let's start off with Pandora 7. This one was a pretty wild story and actually is a lot darker compared to what the cover shows. But basically the story follows a girl named Leah. She is the only human inhabitant in this world that she kind of fell in um, as a young kid. And she is raised by this um, mother dragon. And in this island that she's in, there's actually seven different other species. Um, all kind of varying classes of different types of creatures. Anyways, they um, in the first few chapters, uh, the species gather in this island um, on a celebration day to recognize, you know, all the different types of species and even her Leah cell. Um, funny enough, Leah has always been wondering if there's any humans that she can ever meet, um, whether on the island or outside. But, you know, um, her wish kind of comes true because... Um, she will find humans, but the humans actually ends up attacking her, the island, kills quite a lot of species, and ends up wanting to actually take Leah hostage because she ends up opening this Pandora box. And so that kind of goes into how much this first volume is. It's a pretty wild story, very darker compared to what I had expected, um, kind of graphic as well, and I haven't read a story um, this dark or graphic in quite a while so it was quite an experience but uh, nonetheless I am very intrigued with the story it left on a cliffhanger so I'll definitely be checking out the next volume whenever that comes out but um, pleasantly really enjoyed the series it yeah it definitely reminds me of older stories I used to watch um, such as like psychopaths um, future diary kind of type stories where it's has a little bit of horror graphic elements so yeah, haven't read these type of stories in a while, but I'm looking forward to the continuation of Pandora 7. Moving on, the last two volumes are actually kind of like isekai type series. So first we have is the dark history of the reincarnated villainess. Um, this basically follows a girl named Kohana, and she actually writes an isekai villainous story essentially um, where she portrays herself as like the main protagonist and then in the story there's a villainous which is the sister of the protagonist named Ayana and somehow one day a truck hits her and she gets transported to the story that she writes and obviously she had portrayed the main protagonist as herself because the main protagonist's name is Kohana, which is her name, but she ends up being actually the uh, villainous Ayana instead. So, um, yeah, she has written the story, but she still needs to navigate how to avoid her death flag. 
And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'll definitely be checking out the continuation of the story. And the final volume we have is The Princess of Convenient Plot Devices. Um, basically, it follows a girl that also gets isekai in, but this girl in particular um, gets isekai to her favorite BL story. <laughs> so the story basically follows her. She is the princess of her country, and the story surrounds her brother, who is a prince, who has a lover on the side, which is also, you know, this guy. And so that's pretty much it. I think they have like some sort of contract with her where she needs to find a lover on the side as well so she can produce an heir so that her brother can continue having his relationship. I think that's kind of how it works out, but nothing too much yet. Anyways, though, she basically is trying to find someone to fall in love, but every guy she's liked so far, which is usually her guard, um, her guard actually likes another male. So kind of hard being in a BL world when most of the characters, you know, like the same sex. And so um, she ends up getting this um, new guard and she swears that she's not going to fall in love with him because the moment she does she'll find out that he'll like another guy um, but yeah this um, male guard his name is Clifford and he has sworn allegiance to her and that's pretty much where the volume kind of stops but yeah I thought this was pretty interesting I read quite a lot of BL so always a very interesting take to read stories like this because can I imagine ever being transported in a BL? Probably not, but um, she's she's coping well right now, which is really nice. But yeah, that is the Princess of Convenient Plot Device. I am excited to continue reading on this series. Again, thank you, Yen Press, for sending me these new releases. I had an incredible time rereading or reading these new series, and I'm looking forward for the continuation of all of these series. Now, back to the haul. So the next portion of this haul are going to be dedicated to new releases. So these are all volume ones of new series that has just been announced. So first series we have is Oshinoko volume one. So yeah, I did end up getting a copy of this series um, physically because of course, this is one of my favorite series. Um, I talked about the series in more detail during the Yen Press haul, but Yes, very happy to have this series. I look so amazing and now I have two copies of Oshino Ko. So yeah, very happy. And another series that I ended up pre-ordering as well and now that I have two copies of is Honey Lemon Soda Volume 1 right here. So glad to have this other copy. But yeah, this series was another announcement that I had to instant pre-order and so here it is very glad to have the series as well and the next series is a series i actually haven't read but i decided to pick it up because i thought it looked kind of interesting and it is my special one volume one and this series i actually have another series coming up by the same mangaka but yeah i just thought this was had a really interesting premise about i think it's about a girl who ends up meeting this like idol guy so it is like a idol based series with some romance in it so we'll see how it goes I do really like the art it looks really cool and very excited to try out this series and hopefully I do enjoy it. I think it's a short one as well because I believe there was an announcement of the final volume in Japan recently and so yeah that is this series my special one the next series is an English physical I was so shook to hear, and it is a condition called love. So this one actually was digitally licensed um, in English a while back, but Kodansha finally announced an uh, English physical, so we can now have the series physically as well. And I love the texture of the book. It's kind of like rough, kind of like a sandpaper texture, but not that rough but yes i just love these two characters so so much so basically we follow this female lead her name is hotaro and she meets hanano um after he gets rejected one day after confessing and so he ends up the next day uh asking her out and she accepts but their relationship starts with them actually getting to know each other and there's just so much different topics that this series touches that I am just a big fan of. It's very well written. 
I love their relationship together and all of the different types of situations that occur in this series. So much more I can explain, but I think this is a series that I remember just kind of going in blindly and really enjoying, and I'm very happy to have this in my collection. So yeah, super exciting. So the next series I want to show you is one that I was very surprised to hear a uh, English physical announcement for, but nonetheless, I'm so, so happy to have this, and it is Got Papa. Oh my god, when I heard this, I was like, this is like the most wholesome series of all time. <laughs> okay, I might be exaggerating, but it is so wholesome. Um, basically, it just follows a working dad and his like love and relationship between his wife and their daughter. I remember reading this um, through fan scanlation, and it's just basically a short series with like four different panels. Um, it's actually, I think the series is originated from Twitter, which I do follow them on Gawka. And so, um, yeah, it's just very short collections of story and that's pretty much it. There's other characters as well, like um, the male leads, like father and mother. They're also really cute and his coworkers as well, which is also cute. But yeah, this, this story is just, very fluffy and i'm so glad to have this as you can see completely in color which is also very nice so i'm very happy to have this uh volume the series and i cannot wait for the next release of this series as well so yeah that is got papa and finally we have one new release of a light novel and it is raven of the inner palace i actually watched the anime adaption to this series last anime season and it was fantastic. I love the cinematography as well as the plot of the story. Basically it just follows uh, the female character. She is known to be the raven consort. She holds this very interesting and special power but basically in the palace itself she's isolated due to um, her position in the palace and the new king of the series. She takes initiative to kind of bring her into the uh, palace itself, but they have a very, very interesting dynamic. So I won't go into much details about this story because it's quite complicated, but yeah, I'm very excited to read the light novel and see how it's different from the anime adaption. And I do hope one day that the anime adaption will continue because we did leave in a little bit of a cliffhanger. And so I was very, pleasantly happy about the adaption. It was a really good story. And so I guess for now, we only have the light novel. And I think the light novel itself, um, the anime adaption covered about two or three volumes of this series. And so this vol the series itself is quite short. I think there's only seven volumes. So almost there. So still quite a while until we hit the ending of the series. But nonetheless, I'm very glad that Seven Seas ended up picking up the story because I'm definitely looking forward to continue reading the story. So that wraps up all of the new physical releases that I received for this haul and the last part of this haul is basically new volume releases of the series I'm currently collecting. So let's kind of get through those now. So first we have is volume 2 of No Longer Heroine. I feel like this series in the shoujo community definitely has a lot of mixed reviews um, and so uh, I'm always very hesitant when I'm talking about this story because the plot itself is kind of like not the easiest to follow, but basically it follows a girl named Hattori. She is in love with her friend, Rita, however, has never confessed her feeling because he basically, Rita, doesn't really have any like long-term relationship. He ends up, you know, dating a lot of girls, but they are always like, breaking up after a few months. And so she's kind of waiting for like the good time, like a right time to confess to him. However, Rita ends up getting into a relationship with this kind of not so attractive girl named Adachi. And their relationship is progressing in a way that Hattori is feeling quite intimidated or scared that her place in Rita's life will actually get overshadowed or even replaced. So yeah, it's kind of not the most easiest plot to kind of like, not very likable, I would say. But yeah, nonetheless, this is no longer heroin. Oh, same mangaka as my special one, which is the series I talked about previously. So we'll see. I think one thing about the series is that Hattori, the female leech, has like the funniest 
facial expressions like this is just so iconic she makes the art of this series is just so funny so yeah that is no longer heroin and next we have is volume 10 of love of kill i am obsessed with this story i love the mystery and action in the story and actually the series recently ended in japan the last chapter came out i think a few months ago and so i cannot believe we're almost heading to the conclusion of the story um but yeah that is volume 10 of love a kill and i cannot wait to read this volume and the next volume we have is volume 22 of bungo stray dogs i think i mentioned this quite a few times but i have not read the manga of bungo stray dogs yet because when i decided to collect bungo stray dogs uh, a few weeks later they made an announcement that bungo stray dog was getting a season four and so with that being said i know the anime adaption is not perfect in any way but i watch bungo stray dogs or i got into the series because of the anime adaption and so i just thought it was like, such a weird timing that i was going to start the manga and then the anime announcement came and so i am now watching the season four which is airing right now um on country rolls this season four has been so painful to watch and not like a bad painful but literally every episode so far in season four has been like such a cliffhanger that makes me really just want to pick up the story to read but i have repressed the urge to read the manga because i want to get through this last season and hopefully like maybe this time around the gap between season four to season five won't be as long because from season three to season four i think it was like almost a four or five year gap like i remember watching it in like 2019 for season three and so it's been quite a long time so i had to like get a refresher on the series and then when i finally caught up watched season four i'm so so happy to have this latest volume and if we don't get an announcement like season five announcement anytime soon i'm definitely just gonna read the manga because I cannot wait for another like three four years for season five but yeah that is bungo stray dogs Next volume we have is volume 5 of Cheeky Brat, another favorite shoujo of mine um, that centers around sports. Well, basically it follows a girl named Yuki. She is the basketball manager at her high school. And the male lead is a basketball player named Narus. He is an underclassman of Yuki. Yuki actually has a crush on a senpai during the beginning of the story, however, finds out that her senpai ends up dating another girl, so technically rejected. And Narus kind of pursues Yuki, and I just really like the story a lot. It not only follows during their high school time together, but also into college, which is definitely a transition I personally like in shoujos because um, you never really get a lot of those high school to college transition and so this is why I really like Cheeky Brat a lot. Their relationship kind of goes a lot of its up and downs but, but overall it's still a wonderful story so very glad to have this fifth volume. And we have volume two of I Want to Be a Wall. Now I read volume one a while back and now I'm starting to kind of forget what the story is about but from what I remember two people end up getting married and one of the characters the female lead she is asexual and she likes reading like bls and then the male lead is actually interested in men so uh two very completely different people with different interests and so i thought it was very interesting to read um but hopefully with this volume i can get some more context to these two characters that is I Want to Be a Wall, and I look forward to the development in the second volume. And the next series we have is this one right here. It is Villains Are Destined to Die, a manhwa series that I have really enjoyed. It follows a girl named Penelope who gets transported to, or I guess, Isekai into a game that she played, but she is the villainess of the game. And so I like the way that the game is set up because you can see here, like she can actually see the game options like the game features um as a character and like most of the options are like driven by the female character and so she gets to see that but uh, it's very interesting and of course there's a group of different male characters in this story as well and their relationship with penelope kind of ranges from like love to hate and some lots of 
interesting dynamic between her and all the male love interests. So yeah, that is Villains Are Destined to Die. I'm so happy to have the next installment. I think the only light novel that I got from uh, this portion of the haul is Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian. I still haven't gotten a chance to read the first volume yet, so I have some major catching up to do. But I actually found out about this series um, through Yen Press panel at SoccerCon when I attended there last year, and I just thought the premise of the story is just really cute. So basically, it's two seatmates, um, Alia and the male protagonist, and essentially, like, she, like, kind of speaks to him in Russian and kind of confesses her feeling and she doesn't know that the male protagonist actually knows Russian and so it just kind of brings this very playful relationship dynamic and I haven't really read all too much in the story obviously because I have not read it but I thought this concept was really cute and so I'm a sucker for these type of stories so I'm very excited to read it whenever I have time. Here we have volume three of Outbride. To be honest, I read volume one a few months ago and I don't really remember what had happened. I just know it's a girl that gets transported to this fantasy world and I think she has to get pregnant with one of the male protagonists in the story and there's like various male leads in this like four or five of them. So yeah, it's a very interesting concept. Uh, obviously it's wrapped because it's under the seven seams ship line so it's a little bit more explicit but yeah I definitely need a refresher for the story so I'll eventually reread it and see how it goes but I thought it was interesting enough to continue collecting so yeah that is Outbride volume three. Next we have is volume nine of When Will Ayumu Make a Smooth. I got into this series because one it's the same mangaka as Takaki Song which is a series I really like and second, I actually watched the anime adaption and it was pretty good. So uh, I started collecting the series because I just thought it was like a slice of life, like romance story between two kids. So here, this is Yurishi. She is like the club head. She created this club called the Shogi Club, which is like a Japanese board chess game. And then Ayumu is a person that has joined her club and they're trying to one, expand the club and two, Ayumu really wants to beat Yurishi someday on in the shogi game because if he does, he will confess to her because they do have mutual feelings together. But yeah, this is volume 9 of When Will Ayumu Make His Move? We have is volume 2 of Yakuza Fiance. I actually read the fan scanlation of this series a while back, um, but... Yeah, after the physical announcement, I stopped and now I'm rereading the series again um, with some fresh eyes. So I reread volume one, I think a few weeks ago and it kind of sparked why I really enjoyed this series. I just love how like dark overall feeling of this series. So basically it follows two characters, Yoshino and Kashima. They are from two uh, rival gangs that recently signed a truce to each other and within that truce they actually end up being in an arranged engagement with each other as well and I just really like Hoshino she is a very interesting protagonist kind of has like this appearance of an intimidating girl however it's kind of sweet as well but she ends up moving to um, Kashima's family and he has this like gentle gentlemanly appearance however is not what he seemed obviously they're both from yakuza so um he is like on the dark side of the world but yeah she ends up being very surprised and kind of tries to survive in her new environment so looking forward to the second volume and cannot wait to get some more refresher on the series as well last but not least we have Volume 2 of In the Clear, Moonlit Dusk. Love the color purple of this volume. Actually, very similar enough, it matches with Yakuza Fiance. So basically, the series follows our female character named Yoi. And at school, she's kind of regarded as a prince because of like her, her appearance, essentially. Kind of gives you this like princely, tomboyish vibe. And then she ends up meeting... Uh, another guy at her school, an older senpai who also is regarded as a prince as well, and he takes a very interesting liking to her. Looking forward to reading the second volume, and yeah, with that being said, let's head out to the outro now. 
Alright, so here's an overview of all the different volumes and series that I talked about in today's unboxing. Just very glad to continue making progress in my collection and sharing my thoughts and commentary in all these different series. And again, special shout out to Yen Press for kindly sending some of their newest releases. I had a blast reading through them and maybe getting into new series as well. But yeah, that is everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing and haul video. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care. Bye-bye.